All right, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this special edition where I'm doing a quick first look at a brand new 2020 Polestar 2 front wheel drive single motor variant. Uh, Polestar has come out with uh, a new variant for their Polestar 2 vehicles, which only were up until this point available as dual motor all wheel drive. They come out with a bit more cost effective single motor variant and they invited me to come down for a couple of hours here to downtown Toronto kind of noisy a lot of stuff going on so I apologize for any background noise but I only have a couple of hours to spend with this car to do a little bit of filming and a quick first look at this so let me get right into it. Now I do want to first start off by saying thank you to Polestar Canada for allowing me the use of this. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, take a few pictures maybe even a video of their new retail store here in Toronto as well coming up but as far as the car goes again this is um, Polestar 2 has been out now and been shipping in Canada for almost a year. They started first deliveries in December of 2022 and the car has been doing fairly well in Europe and in North America as they continue to expand their retail outlets and of course a lot of buying is done online. So for 2022 the Polestar 2 uh, encompasses really a, a very nice stable EV platform. The design, I like the design, it's classified as a fastback, so a four, four door sedan but with a hatch so it's a fastback. Uh, nice interior space, it's de definitely very comfortable for four, you could squeeze five in in a pinch but the design is nice. You know the Polestar brand is a subsidiary of the, the sister company is Volvo, they're both owned by Chinese manufacturer Geely and they produce very fine quality vehicles. One thing I found in looking at the exterior and the interiors is the gaps are, are very, very equal. There's no squeaks and rattles. Again, this is a US car that they just brought up. It's only got about a couple hundred miles on it. It's virtually brand new. And there is nothing that I've been able to find bouncing around Toronto streets here, going over streetcar tracks and the like, and a lot of potholes that have has thrown this car away with regards to comfort level and interior, uh, you know, interior squeaks and rattles. So the build quality is quite high. Now, one of the things that Polestar uh, did talk about when they created the two is that they were going after specifically the Model 3, the Tesla Model 3 space. And I wouldn't consider this a Tesla killer, killer by any chance. I don't, I don't like even that term because the more EVs, the better. We need more choice out here. But as far as a, a good competitive uh, luxury uh, midsize sedan or fastback that this is, it definitely places very well. But it is different. It's not a Tesla. It's got different attributes to it. Again, it is available, as I mentioned, initially it came out with an all-wheel drive dual motor. Now this is the first uh, front-wheel drive single motor uh, vehicle, which puts out um, an estimated driving range of over 260 miles. And I'll get into a little bit more on that. Toronto streets. Now what's new for 2022, this is my first look at the Polestar, so I wasn't able to get a 2021. But what's new for the 2022 is, as I mentioned, they've added that single motor variant. They've added more range, so they've done a recent software updates. There are over there updates for this vehicle. So they've been able to push out some more efficiencies and some more range to this to get over the 400 kilometer mark, uh, on the, especially on the single motor. There's now a mechanical heat pump that's available as a paid option. Uh, saves about up to 10% of the battery range or increase your range about 10%. There is also a metal roof option. So this vehicle has the old glass panoramic roof, but if you don't want a glass roof, you live in hot climates or, or very high sun UV exposure areas, you can option for the uh, all aluminum roof or your standard metal roof, which is not a bad idea because you could always put a sunroof in if you wanted to. Um, now also what's new is that they've, because of the front wheel drive variant, and I'll get into pricing at the end, they've now lowered the pricing to get a little bit more entry level. These are still premium midsize vehicles, folks. So don't kid yourselves, this is not a $20,000 car. However, to come in at something lower, I think is a good thing because it'll open up more opportunities. Now this is an all electric uh, vehicle uh, with a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack. The dual motor range will give you about 240 miles, 400 kilometers. These are official EPA numbers. I find EPA a little bit low, so you could squeak out more on that. And on the sing this new single motor uh, Polar, uh, Polestar estimates about 270 miles or 435 kilometers, maybe even a bit more when, when you get ideal weather. Now today it's late fall, late October. We're getting some cool, a little bit of rain that I've had to uh, wait to pass so I could start filming here. So we're gonna see the range drop a bit with these cooler temperatures. But still, if you can get it to the four, you know, over 400s on this, that's pretty good. Now, as I mentioned on the exterior, this is built on Volvo Group's um, CMA platform. So it's, it's very well constructed. The, 
as I mentioned, the fit and finish as well. It's got a 0.278 drag coefficient. And these frameless mirrors are pretty cool. They, have, they offer a little bit lower drag than your normal mirrors, about 30% size reduction. I've seen some reviews where people have been complaining about the small size of these. I haven't had any issues. I've been driving around for the last hour here in downtown Toronto amongst various streets. I've had no problem. Now, as I mentioned, it comes both in a dual motor and single motor. The dual motor puts out about 402 horsepower, 487 pound-feet of torque. Um, I'll put some numbers here on the screen because I don't have them handy on what the single motor is, but it's definitely fast enough. You know, zero to 60 in about seven seconds versus about 4.7 for the dual motor. Sounds like a big difference, but I'll tell you folks, in reality, seven seconds is plenty of time to pull out and pass somebody merge on the highway and do all that kind of stuff. I had a Nissan Leaf uh, 2018 for a couple years with a 7. Point, I don't know, 5 or 7.4 to 0 to 60. And look, I never had an issue in passing people even on small two lane roads. So this will have plenty of get up and go even with the single motor variant. Now I mentioned the battery pack size being 78 kilowatt hours. This is thermally cooled of course and thermally managed so that's good. But driving around downtown uh, and the range meter seems to be pretty accurate. I noticed that on the Volvo XC40 as well when I reviewed that. So uh, the software that they're using seems to be pretty good at estimating the range. Of course range estimates are just that. They're an estimate of range and they constantly can flux depending on driving conditions, temperatures, all that kind of stuff, right? There's a lot of variances there, but I found it to be pretty accurate on what it's showing so far. Now, it does support fast charging. Um, you've got your standard level one, level two, of course, uh, capabilities for home charging, and I'll put the stats here on the screen for that, but it does support fast charging up to 150 kilowatts. Now, it does, that might seem a little low, but I think Polestar is, is saying because we can offer something that gives you 400 kilometers of range, 270 miles or so, even on some uh, downgrading that into colder weather, you can still drive a good two to three hours on the highway, 100% start, let's say, before you have to stop and recharge. So the 150, I've seen some charging curves and they just did a software update now to actually improve the charging curve on this. So to go from 20 to 80 should take about 20 to 30 minutes. When you get into an EV and you go out on the road, you think, oh, gee, I gotta wait 20 or 30 minutes. But I tell you, when you driving for two to three hours, you pull over to a charging station, pit stop area, you get out, you stretch your legs, uh, take a break and get some food or a coffee or whatever. I tell you, that 20 minutes goes by pretty fast. And by the time you get back to the vehicle, your vehicle's either done or almost ready to go. So it's not a lot of wait time. And this falls into that same user experience. Now the interior, as I mentioned, is very nice uh, from a comfort level, from a quality, from a fit and finish. Um, it's got all kinds of different fabrics and, and components working in the interior. You've got some wood, some fabrics, some pla plastics. You know, I found it very clean. It's got a bit of a Spartan look, so they've taken that Swedish mentality of minimalism, put it to this vehicle. Uh, everything's pretty easy to, to find. I'll, I'll run through the menu system in a sec just to show you, but it's pretty easy. Um, I found now the, the driver's position, it is the very front is, is very much like a cockpit. That's what I'm trying to say. It does wrap around. It's got a thick center console. So it is very much like a cockpit experience in there. Now the cargo area is very adequate for a fastback or a sedan hatchback as this is. I like having, it's one thing I wish my Model 3 had was a hatch versus the trunk, but hey, I love my Model 3, don't get me wrong. The boot space is okay. It's not super huge, but it's enough to get some stuff in. You can take, of course, this top tray out if you needed to stack something higher. Adds about 14 fo uh, cubic feet of cargo space uh, with the uh, seats up. You can, there's a 60-40 split, or maybe even looks like a 70-30 on this one because there is a center pass-through as well if you've got skis, but it'll certainly carry some stuff. It does have a, fair, a fairly good size um, secondary trunk underneath, similar to the Model 3, the Model Y, not as big though, probably about a half the size of those, but at least it's got that, uh, that bigger boot underneath. It has an option pack where this thing flips up and it acts like a partial trunk blocker so that if you have some, a couple of grocery bags, you can hang them here from the hooks um, and has, uh, keeps everything to the front part rather than sliding back uh, and, you know, when you're moving around. So I think that's a nice little feature, but again, that is an optional item as part of one of the option packs. Adding to the cargo space is the front trunk, of course, and this one has, it's a small one. It's got a divider that you can remove with a nice tire inflation kit and some roadside assistance stuff, which is cool. You can, mainly you can put your charging cable, some small items here. That's really what it's for. Put your charging cable so you know where it is. It's easy to find and grab, but uh, it's nice to be able to see that as well. All you need is your windshield washer fluid and that's it.
All right, so let me uh, show you inside and uh, walk you through some of the uh, main menu systems. Okay, we'll do a quick look at the information display. As you can see, a very nice binnacle aspect. Uh, everything is within easy reach here. Um, nice clear displays. I've got it set for battery level and range, of course, showing. This has uh, nice features. You can see the steering wheel controls. A very easy buttons and nice feedback on them. Now the display is, uh, I believe, an 11 inch type of uh, portrait display and it's based on a uh, version of Google Android that's written for Polestar that they've invested in for their vehicles. And it's similar to the Volvo XC40, but different. It's more advanced than that is. And it's a very nice simplified. You can, you can go to Google Store and, and download different apps and things like that, but for the main ones you want, everything's here. So for the settings, as an example, you've got all kinds of connectivity settings that you can do um, and set up things and stuff like that. So I won't get into that. And now for the driving, here's where you can change some of the driving aspects. So it's very easy. You've got a few steering feels. You can turn sport mode on and off. Um, your one pedal drive, I've got it for standard, which means that it will stop and hold you at a stop as well because I've got creep off. If I put creep on, then you'll have to continue hitting the brake. Here's where you have all your driving assist menus. Again, everything's easy to understand on and off, what they are, that kind of stuff. Charging capabilities, um, your charge limit set. It's set at 100 because there, this is a demo vehicle that they're going to be booting around to different media and different outlets with so they're going to keep it going to 100 but you can set it they do recommend 90 percent um, of course and then different car you know car status locking interior lights all that kind of stuff it does have um interior um accent lighting which i can't see today because of of uh, I'm, it's only daytime so a nice easy menu to to navigate and the maps is nice one thing i noticed about the maps before uh, when i had the xc40 is that it was pretty good you know i was suspect on the google maps but it's very responsive um, as you can see the display is very quick and into and snappy to act and then if you do put it in a destination it'll tell you how much range you'll 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 need to get there how much range you'll have when you get there if you need to stop it'll give you some recommended charging destination so it's got that tesla like navigation feature which is very nice especially for long trips and then you have your uh, uh, HVAC controls here, different settings. Uh, the rear, um, of course, you can do uh, as well. And then you've got your heated seats uh, and heated steering wheel settings here, which is nice for the Canadian winters uh, for the driver and the passenger to activate. So pretty easy. Everything is uh, easy to, to see here and navigate your different uh, zones or where you want the climate to, uh, to go. I have everything going everywhere. Uh, parking sensors, if you want to uh, start preheating cooling, this is where you can set your um, temperatures for that and your timers. Uh, and then you can get into some different settings, uh, settings, excuse me, as well. If you want things to be automatic, especially in winter time, uh, all that kind of stuff. So a rear defroster on, all that kind of stuff. If it's iced, it'll start up and de-ice. So it's some, some nice little features that they've thought of here, but a very straightforward menu and very easy going. And uh, again, you know, the interior is nice. Um, Here's what I mentioned about that rear view mirror. Uh, if you can see that here, if I get my hand out of the way, you can see how that hatch is. Um, the view is a little small, but it's, it, it didn't inhibit anything. I've been able to drive around here in this pretty busy, rainy traffic today in downtown Toronto with no problems. So it does do the job and it does do it quite nicely. All right, let's take, go for a quick spin and I'll give you some of my thoughts on how it drives. All right, so just a little bit of uh, my thoughts on driving this. So I've been driving this for about an hour or so. As I mentioned, I don't have a lot of time with this, unfortunately. It's uh, fast and furious as these uh, three cars are going across the country since they're the first uh, single motor variants uh, of the Polestar 2s. But what I can tell you is got plenty of get up and go. If I just uh, kind of slow down here, there's nobody around and I kind of just step on it. The uh, traction control kicked in there so I didn't spin and it's a nice gradual increase. So it's certainly not going to be neck jarring. It's not gonna put your back like crazy, but it's going to be very adequate for what it provides you, especially for passing people. Um, you know, as I mentioned, the interior is nicely appointed. Everything is within easy reach. You know, you've really got this close in cockpit design here with everything easy reach, the menu system, easy reach, the wheel controls, everything is easy to get to. Didn't take me long to figure it all out. Now, how does it handle bumps? Well, a little bit of shaky there on the camera, I'm sure. I'm going down a pretty 
bad road here in Toronto. There's a ton of truck traffic that goes along this road of a lot of construction and a lot of stuff going on here for, for months and months and years. So this road is pretty crappy. So this is a good place to really check um, on the fit and finish and the rideability. So if you do hear, hear anything rattling, that is stuff that I have in the trunk that's loose. I have my camera gear and some bags and stuff like that that's in there. Um, everything in here is in the nice fit and finish. Um, it's a very quiet cabin as well um, that I've uh, seen and uh, it, just, it just goes very nicely. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to check the, to try the lane keeping and lane assist functions. I'm sure that there are videos out there. I just haven't really had a chance to go very far with this vehicle to get a good highway run on it. So I will leave that to a, to a future video. But it does have those controls and I'm sure that with the adaptive cruise and the lane keeping that it works very well as it should be. Um, but you know, but again, this is a very nice, pleasant uh, driver experience. Um, I mentioned about the side mirrors earlier that uh, they take a little bit of getting used to um, just because of that, not, not the frameless design, just the way that they're, sh they're cut. Um, it's a little bit different than your normal flat and uh, I have, again have no problems. Now, I thought visibility was going to be an issue on this vehicle um, with that fairly big um, C-pillar out there, but, but the rear, the windows are long and narrow. So that extra length kind of gives you really good visibility because it is a thick B pillar and a thick C pillar. But you know, I've had no problems in, uh, in seeing traffic back there, shoulder checking, not at all. Again, you can activate your camera system as well. Actually, you can't while you're driving. I'm just trying to do that. It doesn't have the ability like Tesla does to activate it. Now, as I mentioned, the seats are comfortable, the back seat. Would I want to spend four hours in the back seat? Yeah, probably not. However, in saying that, it is a very comfortable seat and I wouldn't have any issues on drives if I had to. Now, the rear window visibility is a little bit different. It's got this bit of a cutout feature, I think, because of the hatch, the way the roof design is. Um, and I thought at first that that was going to be pretty narrow, but, you know, looking at it and driving around now, I really had no issues with it in having visibility. Sure, I would like to see a bit more visibility in that glass, but, you know, it hasn't done anything to offset the safety of this vehicle or the drivability of this vehicle. So like any new vehicle, it just takes a little bit of getting used to the little quirks in this. But, you know, overall, this is a very comfortable car. Now, I know Robert Llewellyn um, uh, from Fully Charged, my uh, good friend out there, he really raved about the vehicle. I thought that it was even a step up over Tesla, take away the, the, the battery performance and the supercharging environment, that the fit and finish and the drivability. Um, I would agree that this is a very, very phenomenal car. Tesla is different though, and we know why they're different and those, those value adds, but this still would be a very good car to purchase if I wasn't into the Tesla product and wanted something that uh, had a good build quality uh, and that was very quiet. And this is a very quiet and comfortable uh, cabin. As you can hear, it's starting to rain a little bit. So I wrapped up my outside video at just at the right time to get into the driving segment here uh, on this nasty road. But uh, you know, again, I, I'm not sure what else to say. This is a very pleasant experience, a nice uh, cockpit. It is a little in, a close, closed in for me. Um, but I'm getting used to it. Um, this big thick console, um, you know, everything is comfortable. The armrest has lots of little storage cubbies. Only one front cup holder, but there is stuff in the dash. Uh, sorry, in the doors that you can put stuff. So, you know, I, do they need another cup holder? Probably. Could you get one? Probably. Um, you know, again, uh, here we are. You know, this is a good test. I'm going through some pretty bumpy roads and the suspension's handling it quite well. Uh, watching my speed. So uh, good job, Polestar. This is a very nice environment and uh, definitely something that people would get very comfortable with. Now, of course, Polestar being a uh, brand of a subsidiary of Volvo, and Volvo, we all know, is known for safety. So there's no lack of safety features here in the advanced driver assistance uh, systems, the ADAS systems. With over to their updates, of course, that will constantly add improvements to these systems over time and they do uh, push these out via the cloud, similar to what Tesla does. But you have collision and avoidance, rear collision mitigation, running the off-road mitigation, lane keep assists, uh, city safety with steering support and cross traffic alert with blind spot monitoring. So a good amount of safety systems. Now, Polestar 2 has scored five star in the NCAP safety uh, tests. I haven't seen the uh, North American ones yet. Wait for them, but I do expect them to score uh, on an average of five stars here in North America as well. The one thing I wanted to mention on the safety is, as Polestar's done something kind of unique from here, is they've put something called their Spock Block. 
their severe partial offset crash. I have to read this. And basically it's a block on both of these front uh, quarter panels so that in an offset collision it'll help deflect the energy around the cabin on both sides of the cabin, adding to additional occupant safety inside the car. All right, so as you folks, I always try to climb into the back seat to see how my large frame uh, gets into these things. Now, one thing I did note when I sat in this vehicle during the static display back in 2018 is I thought the rear seat was kind of small. So let's see if they've done anything to change that. Yep, got to duck a little bit to get in and kind of slide in. Um, but it's not bad. I think with the panoramic roof, adds a little headroom. I've got a good fist of headroom here, and I'm about five six, five six and a half. In, uh, in height, um, lots of leg room here. The feet, sit, uh, feet go under this, the front seat nicely and I've got the seat where I would for driving. So if you've got a tall driver in front of you, it's gonna be a little cramped back here. It certainly will work. Would I wanna sit here for a long trip? Me, I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm a bigger guy, so it might be a little uncomfortable for me over time, but it certainly will work. It's a very nicely appointed rear seat with uh, vent controls and USB ports and uh, individual seat heaters and that kind of stuff and an armrest. It's very comfortable, certainly for, you'll fit five in a pinch, um, but so not bad, pretty, pretty nice. All right, so let's get into pricing now on the vehicle. Here in Canada, the long range single motor um, which is going to start deliveries in January of next year, will be priced at an MSRP starting price of $49,900. So not low enough to, to qualify for the federal incentive, but certainly low enough to qualify for a lot of provincial incentives. Um, the long-range dual motor, of course, that's been uh, shipping now for some time, starts at a $56,900 Canadian MSRP, and then there's different option packages that you can get. There's a destination charge and all the usual stuff. Now, this does come with three years of complimentary service and three years of data. So you're subscribing to the data for the Google Maps and all that kind of stuff that you've seen. Now, there are option packages that you can get ranging from $5,500 and $4,500, depending on the different packs. You can go into the check up their website and all kinds of different options that you can add to this. Uh, and that's one thing that's nice is you can customize this quite extensively to your liking. Now, speaking of options, one option you do want to look at if you do live in a colder climate area is the Plus Pack, which comes with the heat pump and a bunch of other goodies at about $5,500 Canadian. Well worth the investment, especially over the long term life of the vehicle. All right, so I'm done with my test driving and I've returned the vehicle and I wanted to just take a minute to introduce you to the post car spaces that they have and maybe you can introduce yourself uh, for my viewers. Sure, yeah. Hi, I'm Donnie Nordlicht with Polestar um, and here, welcome to Polestar Toronto, one of our uh, new Polestar spaces here in North America. Yeah, these are great. You know, it's a nice simplified approach to car shopping where obviously you can shop online, but. I know myself being a bit older that I like to kind of kick the tires and go in and talk to real people. So tell me about the concept of the spaces across uh, where you've been globally, basically. Yeah, so you'll see Pulsar spaces all over the markets that we're in. We're actually on four continents now, which is really exciting. Uh, the whole Pulsar space model is to make uh, sort of a blend between an art gallery and a car showroom where you can come in, you can learn about the vehicles, it's low pressure, it's not a, a traditional sales model. Um, you can treat it like a traditional retailer. Um, our retail partners do everything from giving test drives, doing point of sale, or you can do it all at home. If you want to go online and just click, really our business model is digital first, so we meet the consumer wherever they are. If they want to go online and they want to order fully online, they can. If they want to come in and see the car, they can. If they want to do a blend, they can. We also do uh, pickup and delivery for all sales, service, and test drive for all customers and prospective customers as well. So we're happy to come to you for anything you need. That's great. And for the, for the service side of it, what, what geographies do you have service elements uh, established? So uh, is it right across Canada or specific geos right now? Right now it's specific geographies generally attached to our Polestar spaces here in Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. Okay. However, we do also offer mobile service. So if you live further than the range, which is about 150 miles from each space, um, we'll send a tech out to you. We've also found that with Polestar 2 in particular, we're able to do a lot of things that people would traditionally go into a service bay for using over the air updates and being able to push software updates to fix any issues a customer might have. 
Well, it's a great space, and it's the first time that I'm actually seeing one uh, other than in pictures. So congratulations again. I know you guys have been here now for almost a year, December 2020. Correct. If I'm uh, not mistaken, you guys opened here. Correct. We opened December of 2020. Yeah. We now actually have over 20 Pulsar spaces operating across the U.S. and Canada, and our goal is to have 35 in North America by the end of next year. And for Canadian expansion, any idea most of the other major cities over time? We're looking into it, but yeah. we're really happy with uh, Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal because we're able to address 80% of the EV market in Canada yeah. just with those three spaces alone. Exactly, exactly. So I encourage anybody that's in the GTA to come down and check out the Full Star space. Uh, I'll have all the uh, address information uh, in the show notes. But again, thanks Donnie for the use of the vehicle. I appreciate that. I know it's a limited time, but I really uh, had a lot of fun kicking the tires and driving her around and for uh, looking at your beautiful space here. Yeah, nice. glad you enjoyed and glad you were able to join us. Thank you. All right, quick and dirty show here. I'm trying to, trying to maximize my use of this vehicle uh, that I've had just for a couple hours here on this uh, quick look review of the Polestar 2 single motor front wheel drive edition. Do I recommend this? Hey, you guys know me, absolutely. I give it the Fonzie recommendation, hey. Uh, this is a good, great vehicle, uh, very quiet, you know, good driving manners, um, very competent range more than enough get up and go on the single motor. I'm glad that they've come out with a, a little, little bit lower cost alternative because not everybody wants dual motor and the top of the line models. When you're you know, getting into the 65, 70, 75 thousand dollar range, that's a lot of money. So be able to get something here with some provincial incentives, let's say in the province of Quebec, you can be out the door in this thing in the mid 40s, mid to upper 40s. That's not a bad deal for a car of this quality and of the, the capacity and the capabilities that this vehicle has. So I'm thankful that Polestar has come out with the second model and I'm very thankful for them to allow me the use of this vehicle to road test today. So I appreciate that. And hey, that takes me to the end of the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you haven't uh, subscribed on YouTube, please do. I always enjoy comments. If you have one of these, I'd love to hear your, your feedback and what you think on your ownership so far. I am starting to see more of these now out on Canadian roads, so it's great to see. Of course, if you're a Patreon supporter, thank you very much. I'm always humbled by Patreon support. You can check out the link below, and if you want more information, do that. Of course, everybody stay safe. We're still going through a lot of stuff, and keep watching the EV landscape for lots of stuff going on. I hope to get one of these probably over the winter time, maybe January, February, to get one to spend more than just a couple of hours with, so stay tuned when I do that review and I don't mind doing cold weather reviews that kind of really shows what EVs are about but again a great vehicle thanks a lot for tuning in and until the next episode everybody stay safe and I will see you when I see you take care and bye-bye